Welcome to Nursing Lectures. In this video, we will go through NCLEX MCQ question topic, Infection Control and Safety. Question 1. Which is the most effective way to prevent the spread of healthcare-associated infections? A. Using hand sanitizers with at least 60% alcohol. B. Wearing personal protective equipment, PPE, consistently. C. Implementing proper sterilization techniques. D. Practicing respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer B. Wearing personal protective equipment, PPE, consistently. Description Consistent use of PPE, such as gloves, masks, and gowns, is crucial in preventing the transmission of healthcare associated infections. Question 2 What is the primary mode of transmission for Clostridium difficile infection? A. Airborne transmission. B. Contact transmission. C. Droplet transmission. D. Vectorborne transmission. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer B. Contact transmission. Description Clostridium difficile infection is primarily transmitted through contact with contaminated surfaces or through direct contact with an infected individual. Question 3. What is the recommended duration for performing hand hygiene with soap and water? A. 10 seconds. B. 20 seconds. C. 30 seconds. D. 40 seconds. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer B. 20 seconds. Description To ensure effective hand hygiene, it is recommended to wash hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, covering all surfaces of the hands. Question 4. Which precaution is recommended for a client with chickenpox? A. Airborne precautions. B. Contact precautions. C. Droplet precautions. D. Standard precautions. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer C. Droplet precautions. Description Chickenpox is primarily transmitted through respiratory droplets, so implementing droplet precautions, including wearing a mask and maintaining proper hand hygiene, is essential. Question 5. Which is an example of a healthcare associated infection? A. Influenza. B. Tuberculosis. C. Surgical site infection. D. Common cold. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer C. Surgical site infection. Description A surgical site infection occurs after surgery as a result of the introduction of pathogens into the surgical wound, often due to improper sterile techniques. Question 6. What is the recommended distance for maintaining respiratory hygiene during coughing or sneezing? A. 1 foot. B. 2 feet. C. 3 feet. D. 4 feet. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is. Answer. C. 3 feet. Description, maintaining a distance of at least 3 feet from others while coughing or sneezing helps minimize the spread of respiratory droplets containing infectious agents. Question 7. Which is an example of a healthcare-associated infection caused by a multidrug-resistant organism? A. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. B. Streptococcus pneumoniae. C. Escherichia coli. D. Candida albicans. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer A. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. Description MRSA is a multi drug resistant organism commonly associated with healthcare associated infections, particularly in healthcare settings. Question 8. 
What is the purpose of donning personal protective equipment, PPE? A. To protect the healthcare worker from exposure to infectious agents. B. To protect the client from exposure to infectious agents. C. To enhance communication between the healthcare worker and the client. D. To facilitate ease of movement during patient care activities. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer A. To protect the healthcare worker from exposure to infectious agents. Description Donning PPE is essential to protect healthcare workers from potential exposure to infectious agents during client care activities. Question 9. What is the appropriate action for a healthcare worker with open cuts or wounds on their hands? A. Cover the cuts or wounds with a waterproof dressing and wear gloves. B. Avoid direct contact with clients until the cuts or wounds are healed. C. Wash hands more frequently and avoid using hand sanitizers. D. Notify the supervisor and request reassignment to non-client care duties. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer A. Cover the cuts or wounds with a waterproof dressing and wear gloves. Description Covering cuts or wounds with a waterproof dressing and wearing gloves helps prevent the transmission of pathogens and protects both the healthcare worker and clients. Question 10. Which precaution is recommended for a client with tuberculosis? A. Droplet precautions. B. Airborne precautions. C. Contact precautions. D. Standard precautions. Think the answer in 54321. The answer is Answer B. Airborne precautions. Description Tuberculosis is primarily transmitted through airborne particles, so implementing airborne precautions, such as using a particulate respirator mask and maintaining negative pressure rooms, is crucial for preventing transmission. Thank you for your time. Subscribe for more videos.